Welcome to the YFC Virtual Fundraiser. We're so happy to have you here with us tonight. We know that you've been on a lot of screens lately, but we wanna say thank you for taking the time to sign in tonight and hear all that YFC has done. I truly believe that it's going to be inspiring and that you're going to leave this night feeling awesome about all the things that God is doing. My name is Stephanie Eggers. I'm the youth director at Centerpoint Church in Massapequa. But before I worked for Centerpoint, I worked for Long Island Youth for Christ for nine years. I loved working for YFC and I love the mission of YFC. The mission of YFC is to spread the gospel to 11 to 19 year olds in schools, communities, and even a juvenile detention center. You're going to hear stories from staff, volunteers, and students tonight. If at any point you feel like your heart really wants to learn more about YFC, please don't hesitate to go to liyfc.org where you can give or you can check out how you can get more involved with Youth for Christ here on Long Island. This past year has been incredible for all of us. And since the spread of COVID, it's been YFC's mission to replace, not cancel ministry activities with teens on Long Island. YFC's motto is anchored to the rock, geared to the times. And this year they've had to be geared to the times more than ever before. This past year has been really difficult for all of us. We've all experienced pain, grief, and loss in one way or another. As we look back, we can see how difficult this year has been for our world, especially for our young people. YFC has done their best and done an amazing job at taking the time of walking through this year with the young people that they minister to. Take a look at this next video and see how YFC has walked alongside the teens through this past year. If you guys could describe this year in one word, what word would that be? <laughs> canceled. Everything canceled. <laughs> Canceled. Every program we had to go to, canceled. My, my finals, canceled. <laughs> like we lost all our opportunity. I'd say painful. <laughs> I don't know, like. Damn here. Especially with senior year and stuff like that. Painful, you guys. <laughs> Everyone's trying, obviously we're all trying to do our best, right? No one's like, I don't know, you know what I mean? Cause it's like, it's a sucky situation. We're trying to make the best of it. I think like the original plan for the hybrid stuff was like they were gonna divide you by last name and oh my God, no. a bunch of like I'm a B right Benjamin and a bunch of my friends weirdly all have last names at the, at the end of the alphabet oh. I was freaking out I was like you know what if none of my friends are in the cohort I might as well just not do hybrid because I'm not gonna know anybody but um I remember being excited for hybrid because I like the in-person school days, as tired as they make me, I have some sense of like structure to my life and personally I like that and I feel like that's what school really taught me was to have a good structure in my life and now, oh my gosh, one day I have structure then the other day it's just loose. I do whatever I want to do and it's not good. I'm, I got really good at solitaire guys, <laughs> let me just say that. Uh, my high score is 11,000. You guys, you guys don't know how high that is. I don't know. I don't know. What <laughs> I don't know <laughs> you don't know the scale? Well, let me tell you, it's impressive it's coming from me. Uh, <laughs> it's just ran random stuff because when you have so much time, you're bound to get better at something. And that something was solitaire for me. Well, I think for me, the silly thing like everyone knows was TikTok. Like that was like blowing up during quarantine. And like I tried really hard to try to get like a viral video, and which I did like 2.2 million which i still keep it there <laughs> but yeah that's like probably like one most silliest thing like i like share that everywhere like snapchat instagram like. <laughs> this club was the only sense of like order i had in my life during quarantine because we met like even like as andrew's saying like in the summer we even met and like by then any sense of order in my life was gone like i would sleep when the sun started to rise and then it was so bad and then but i just like like every tuesday it would just be christian club christian club and i feel like that was what like kind of kept me from falling off the edge 
the first year I was in club, like I was learning the lessons and after that I was teaching them and it's like, I like learning more about my faith, but like, I can't do it anywhere else. Like this is where I get to do that. So I'm really happy to be, I get a chance to do that here. That's awesome. Well, we are so happy that you are a part of this club and leading it, I would say all of us, right? Agreed, 100%. Agreed. 100%, yeah. It's very hard to maintain your faith when you're at home always, right? It's it's not that easy, right? Because when you're at home, we, even, we said this about school, it's very easy to get distracted. We could always say, I'll do it later, but it's very easy for us just to not think about it at all, right? One of the things that Youth for Christ gets to provide, and, and it's so wonderful that we have people praying for you guys and supporting you, um, so many people that you'll never know. And it's so great that we have wonderful supporters that get to send uh, Youth for Christ leaders into, into schools like this and get to, I'm just privileged to be one of them. And I'm so grateful to have gotten to know you guys over the years and I'm so proud of all of you. This has truly been an incredible year. We really have learned so much. I remember last year around this time, we had just made the call to go virtual. Our fundraising event was coming up and we were really worried about how it would work out and how would we do ministry going forward. The truth is God has provided for us in so many ways throughout this past year. It's actually been really incredible. And we've learned so much about how we do ministry. See, we value large groups so much. We love when there's lots of kids together and we get to present the gospel and build lots of relationships. But this year, all that had to change. We had to focus on the small group and the individual. And with that, we really learned a lot. We were able to go deep and we were able to see a lot of growth. Our staff connected with young people like never before. It was amazing how even in this difficult time, God allowed us to be present in the young people's lives and be there for what they needed. We needed to be there to help them get through some of the difficulties, some of the anxiety, some of the fear, the depression even that they were, that they were experiencing and our staff was there present all along. You see, at Youth for Christ, we really value authentic Christ-sharing relationships. Every kid we encounter, we wanna get there with them. We wanna to talk to them about Jesus in their life and what it means to be a follower of Christ. And this year, as we focused, we had more appointments than ever before. We did more small groups than ever before. And God really allowed us to drill down and to get deep with the young people that we work with. It was an amazing to experience, and we can't wait to be able to do the big, large events again, but we learned so much that we know that our focus always needs to be on the individual. You see, we love for young people to know Jesus. We want to give every kid on Long Island the opportunity to know Jesus and to say yes to Him. And to do that, we know that we needed to have ministries that would get us to where every kid actually is. You see, we've had this call in our heart from God to go to more difficult communities, even the detention center here on Long Island. And with that, that gave us the opportunity to reach kids everywhere, to give every kid the opportunity. So yes, we are in public schools where we help young people share their faith with their friends and we see these young people do amazing things. You'll hear some of the stories of our core teams, these student leaders who are sharing their faith with their friends in the public schools. We also have our campus life and city life groups that get us into different types of communities. All across Long Island, there are so many different kinds of communities, and we want to be in each and every one of them. And yes, you'll hear stories about the detention center where God has opened the doors for us to do ministry and work with difficult young people who are going through really challenging times. But God has taught us and is teaching us how to be effective with people, young people, everywhere, from every background, going through all sorts of things. It really makes a difference. When an adult comes alongside of a young person and helps them see who Jesus is, it really changes their lives. So we have staff and volunteers and people who give to this ministry that really make a difference in young people's lives. And we've seen that this past year. Because we are able to be there, we've seen lives changed. We've seen lives rejuvenated and refreshed and people get through difficult times just because we were able to be there and share the gospel with them. I think God wants us to be in more public schools and more facilities and more communities where we can help young people see who He is. And none of that is possible without people like you. People like you have gotten us there by supporting us, by giving to the ministry, by praying for us. When we have an effect, you also have an effect on their lives. You have done a great work by being a part of the mission of Youth for Christ. 
my hope is tonight that if you feel connected to this ministry, that you would want to become one of those as well. Thanks, Craig, for sharing your heart and the mission of YFC of where God is leading in the future. Remember, if at any point during this night you feel your heart tugging you to learn more about YFC, you can go to liyfc.org to learn how you can partner and connect with the mission. We've got something exciting for you tonight. In lieu of all of us getting to be together and hearing all the stories and sharing that time together, we want everyone to feel connected with each other. So what we're asking is take a picture of how you're watching, and then we want you to post it on social media. You can post it on Instagram and use the hashtag Long Island YFC, or you can post it on the YFC Facebook page. And if you do this, you'll be entered in to a contest to win a $150 Amazon gift card. And who couldn't use $150 to Amazon, right? YFC is all about being relational and connecting with teens and hearing their stories. In this next video, you're going to get an opportunity to hear some stories. I hope that you hear these stories and that you connect with them and you get a little bit more of an idea of all that YFC is doing in their lives. Uh, my name is Abigail Wu. Uh, so I'm a leader at my school's Christian club, which is called BASIC. Uh, which stands for Brothers and Sisters in Christ. And I've been a leader for this past year, uh, and I've been a member of the club uh, since freshman year, so two years. Uh, most, most of my friends are not Christians, and they probably would never have gone to church. Uh, but since we have like a club that's right in school, and if we were in person, it's like right down the hallway, uh, it's been much easier to you know, prompt them to be like, oh, you can come here, you know, we have, we have food and nice people. Uh, so that's been a really great uh, part of the club. Um, I think all of our members and leaders, we can kind of resonate with that, is that we can, uh, we can invite our friends more easily to come to a place where they could, uh, you know, meet Christ. So at my school, I feel like God has been moving through basic uh, just by, you know, having a lot of people be there together and we can see throughout the year how people have kind of, um, like people have all grown and we've become um, closer, we've grown closer to God through BASIC uh, because it's kind of like a time where we could just shut off everything else and uh, focus on one thing, which is really important for us. Our entire year has been online, on Zoom, um, so it's been really different than what it usually would be. Uh, and I also feel like even if we don't see, you know, some great, big revival in our school or anything like that. It doesn't mean that nothing's happening in our school. It's kind of just like, oh, we're in the middle of just being planted, right? So we're, we haven't like sprouted, we're just in the middle of growing. Um, something I want adults to know about YFC is that it's like a really great organization with like really great people and it's really been benefiting the, our communities and our schools and the people in our schools a lot. So my name's Jacob. Uh, I've been going to CL for a while. Um, I got involved because a friend of mine, uh, he was like heading out on Thursdays and stuff to like, he told me he was going to like a church group. And I was like, all right, that seems cool. I didn't have anything to do on Thursdays. So I was like, whatever, I'll check it out. And so I went and I had a really good time. It was like a Halloween party. I've been kind of shy, like when I was younger. And so I would be like really nervous, like going to new places or talking to new people and stuff. But well, all you guys were so friendly and stuff. I'm like, you know, come on, let's hang out. And so, and I, I really just felt welcome, and I felt like it was so easy to make friends and to feel like confident. When I was younger, I had a really, like I mentioned, I had a really bad relationship with my dad, and he was abusive. Um, he was really strong, like in belief in God, but in his own way, and so that was only like the only way I'd been exposed to. So it became like sort of complicated for me to try and feel close to God because I just felt like I was just being pushed away. I felt like, you know, how could somebody preach like, you know, love and, you know, respect and stuff and at the same time treat me another way. You know, going to CL and seeing like a different perspective of like, you know, a church where everyone's welcome and everybody like, no matter who they are is, there to be connected with God as like one, you know, like is we're all like one people. So it's uh, it's a really good thing, and it's something that it for starters gives your kids something to do. There's a lot of places, you know, kids ain't got nothing to do, but at CL is a lot. Of, it's a lot of fun because it's 
not just like church and stuff, but at the same time, it's like, you know, just hanging out with your friends and stuff. I've made a lot of really good friends through there, and I feel like I would be a lot more isolated and I would be a lot more, I would be in a much worse place as far as my faith goes, and um, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have grown into who I am now. I just want people to know that uh, campus life is a great place, and I wouldn't be doing this video if it wasn't. It's just, uh, it's a really important thing that's become in my life, and like I said, just making so many friends through there, and uh, being able to sort of develop my own relationship with God as well has been really important to me. So I just would think that people should know that it's, it's a really great environment and something that's like, it's a special thing. Uh, my name is Jai. Um, I used to be a heavy smoker. I used to smoke marijuana like every day. Like I used to smoke weed. Like I would go with my friends after school. We'd go smoke. I'd skip school to go smoke weed. Like, and then I noticed to a point where I was like, like I'm addicted. And YFC really, it helped me change because I would go there on a Monday night, and I would I would still think about the time like I went there hot, like you know, and it would make me want to be a better person. Like YFC has really become like my family. Like that's what it feels like. It feels like home. Like it feels like somewhere I can be comfortable and, and still like love God. Like I don't have to be around people that like my, my former friends that like would smoke and drink and party every night. Like I, just, I don't have to be around that to be comfortable anymore. Like I don't have to, to do those things to, to feel wanted. It, like it's never gonna feel that void. Like I would go to the IFC like the, the week, weeks and weeks after, and I'd always say like, I don't want to smoke no more. And I tried to do it on my own, but like, I really couldn't. Like, I would still fall back into that that loop, that little circle, that that loophole, right? But then once you place things in God's hands, it it changes. And YFC really encouraged me to do that because like, having to hear like different leaders speak about different things, like it brings. It brings you knowledge, like, it brings you like, oh, I can do this on my own, like, you know, God, that's why he's there, like, to help us through our storms and our midst. And that's what YFC does, like, it brings you to somewhere you can feel that presence instead of, like, hearing about it. Yeah, hearing about it, it'll, it'll motivate you to, to get cl closer to Christ, but once you feel that, like, it's just like, wow. Like, it, I, I can't even think of words to describe it, like, it's just like, Wow, it's like amazing, like, and YFC does a, a like, it does an unbelievable job. Isn't it so great to hear all that God is doing in these students' lives? I love hearing how they're all being a light to everyone around them. In Acts 13.47, we read, For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light to the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. Isn't that what we're seeing in these young people? It's so awesome. Next up, we're gonna hear from some of the YFC staff and update you on what's going on in two of our new areas. It's been about two years since we've been invited into the juvenile detention center to work with the young people there. We had to take a break because of COVID and that was hard. Uh, all through that time, we would bring food or we did a lot of different drives. We brought games, we brought books. We were just trying to stay connected. All along, I talked to the director there every other week or so, praying for her, praying for the staff, and praying for the young people that are in the facility. This fall, we had the chance to go back and work with the kids in the juvenile detention center. You know, it's been actually an amazing experience because before COVID started, there were lots of groups that came in to work with the kids. But after, we were the only group that was invited back. We built such a good rapport and relationship with the staff and the guards there that they love having us be there. In fact, I used to only be there twice a week, but since COVID and we've been able to go back in, we've been able to be there four times a week. We have a, a friend of ours who's volunteering to teach the kids a music lesson and another who is doing art lessons with the kids. It's all opportunities to connect with them, to hear their stories, and to teach them more about their purpose in this life and who God is and how much he loves them. You know, I get to hear stories from these kids all the time. Every time I walk through those doors, I'm hearing about their life, their past, the things they've done, even their hopes and dreams. 
I've heard things and experienced things that I never thought about before. It's been incredible to learn about where they're from and what they've been through and how they got into this situation. These kids are amazing. And though they're in a difficult place, that doesn't mean that God doesn't have a future and a plan for their lives. And I get the ability and the opportunities to talk to them about that all the time. So recently, we were in the juvenile detention center and the director there had told me how they lost their art director. Uh, this man was there a couple times a week doing art classes with the kids and they loved him. They built a great rapport with him, a great relationship. And so there was this void there. So I just asked her like, what would it be like if I could find somebody for you to replace some of that? And she said, please, if you could do something, that would be great. So I started thinking and praying and uh, God brought to my mind my friend Kevin here. And I knew that he was an artist. I knew that he had done some similar things like this. So I texted him out of the blue. I don't know when the last time I even had <laughs> talked to him was, but texted him and told him about the opportunity and he was super interested. So Kevin, why don't you tell everybody what that was like getting that text and what yeah. God's been doing in your life with all that? Yeah, sure. I was, it was really cool, the moment for me, because at that point in time, um, I just wake up in the morning and every morning it's the same prayer. It's just, Lord, here's, here are my loaves and my fishes. And, you know, like I, I joke around with my kids. They go, Dad, what, what do you do for a living? I'm like, I, I smear pretty colors on pieces of cloth. <laughs> I'm a painter. Um, so how can God use something like that, you know? And so, but I lifted up to God. I'm like, God, I don't know what you can do with this. And it was in that season, <clears throat> as I was hitting the reset button after a few different things that I received a text. Um, and my heart was just so stirred because all the time, um, my desire has been to just use my gifting in a way to reach out to the lost, to reach out to the people who are in need, like to reach out to really honestly anyone from any swath, I don't care where it is in society, and then where could it be more condensed than this? Yeah. So for me, it was just like, God, like, I, I felt so grateful because it was like, almost like giving like a horse, like a, like kind of like a freeway to like run right down. And it's just like, it's very exciting. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's been wonderful. I've seen him. He's been going in for a couple of months now and he's working with the kids. And most times he sits with them and he's teaching them. Uh, he's sharing his faith with them. He's, he's uh, drawing them. And so it's been a really cool experience. But I'd love to hear from your perspective. What has it been like? How's, how's it been working with the young people in the facility? Yeah. What's it been like for you? Yeah, um, it's absolutely wonderful. Like uh, the first time I went in, it was, it was nice. You and I were together, it was like warm enough. Um, last time I went in, uh, there was a split in the group. Uh, they had one group over here, the other group was over there and that they were just taking care of different things. And went and taught the one group and nobody would even make eye contact. <laughs> nobody saw me before ever. Yeah. They wouldn't, they, that was the first time I ever saw any of them. And they all hung out on the far side of the room. And I just started sketching and I was just like, God, like do with this what you will. About 15 minutes goes by, nothing at minute 16, they all came over. <laughs> And then they kind of like sort of started like in a fun way fighting over who was going to be sitting for the drawing. And I got to talk to the whole entire group. And by the time I walked out the, that room door, um, it was getting late. And I said, hey, do you guys have any prayer requests, anything? They started sharing about their lives, brothers who were in prison. Kevin, can you play, pray for my brother? So I'm ready to go home. And I walk past another door. And there's the group B. And they were like, Kevin! And they all called out and they all ran over and they hugged me. That's the group I've been working with. Mm -hmm. And so I had another hour and a half, two hours with them. And I just, uh, it was the most beautiful night. And it was just like two different groups. But um, just seeing them all, they're actually growing in their gifts in art. Yeah. Uh, so I give them kind of like nuggets every single time I go. But then also doing their drawings. It's this whole idea of like, you know, when we're lost in the world, the enemy's first thing is he, he causes us to not know the worth of other people, and he causes us to not know our own worth. Mm -hmm. And God wants, is in the process of showing us how much he loves us. Drawing and painting someone's portrait tells them they're worth something, 100% mm -hmm. of the time. So it's really, really cool. Wow, that's right up our alley. We love uh, seeing those kids the way God sees them and letting them know that no matter what's going on in their life, that there's chaos in their world, but God sees them and knows them and sees their worth. So you teaching them that is incredible. Cool. And it just gives them this opportunity to know that God has a plan and a future for their life. Yeah. Um, and that he can bring peace into their, into their lives. So that their circumstances might not change, yeah. but their heart and what God is doing in them can change by 
by his love for him. So, yeah. you know, when we bring guys in like Kevin in and we have other volunteers coming in to work with these young people, it's an amazing opportunity. They receive it, they respond to it yeah. in such powerful ways, and God uses it to shape and mold them uh, into a new person, yeah. really. So it's been, it's been fantastic. So thank you yeah. for doing that. Thank you for sending people like Kevin and others into that facility where we can make a difference in these kids' lives. Earlier tonight, I told you I, I often think about why. Why do I do this? And I wanted you to know why. I said it was because somebody did it for me when I was young. Uh, I also said it's because it's effective, it matters. I think we make a difference in kids' lives. But the truth is, it's because I can't help it. Now, this is such a big part of my life and a part of who I am. I know God created me for this. I just can't help it. I'm compelled to do this type of work, to bring the gospel to young people because it is so important and because of what Christ has done for me. The Apostle Paul says it this way in 1 Corinthians. For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live shall no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So I am compelled to do this mission. I am compelled by what God has done for me. And I want to be more like Paul. I want to live more for others and more for the sake of the gospel. My hope is tonight that you also feel compelled. I hope that you've heard the stories from our young people and our staff and volunteers and that has inspired you to get involved. But really, I hope that you feel compelled because of what God has done for you, because he's made such a big difference in your life, because his love has changed the way you are. And I hope that you want to give that same gift to young people all across Long Island. You can do that simply by partnering with us today. We need people who know this mission, who love it, and they want to affect people's lives because it works, because the gospel can get into their lives and make a difference in them. And so tonight, I hope that you will take some time and pray and consider how can you get involved? Maybe you want to become a volunteer, or maybe there's another way you can think of to support this mission, or maybe you want to give by supporting us financially tonight. I want to give you some time to think about that. So we're going to have Pursue and JC come. They're going to play a song. And while they play and you listen to that song, I hope that you pray and think exactly how God wants you to partner with Youth for Christ tonight. Thank you again for being here with us. It's been a great pleasure.
the blind will see and the dead are being raised when we call on the name of the one who conquered great all sin and fear will bow at the sound of jesus name he is my savior the blind will see and the dead are being raised when we call on the name of the one who conquered great all sin and fear will bow at the sound of jesus name he is my for joining us tonight for our virtual fundraiser. I really hope that you felt connected and blessed by all the stories that you've heard. Feel free to stay online to chat with the staff. And if you have any questions about how you can get connected with the mission and vision of YFC, you can ask questions there. I really hope that you would prayerfully consider partnering with YFC after this event. It is such an amazing organization that is doing such amazing things in teens' lives. We're gonna post the winners of the gift card in the chat, but don't worry if you don't see it, we'll make sure to contact you. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed evening. I was buried beneath my shame.